Warning, warning. Two idiots are back on their bullshit. Please take cover and await further episodes. Hello. Welcome back to Discovering SCP. We really haven't ended. We're still going. We're still here. Yeah. You can't get rid of me. We're legally required and to keep going or else I'll take away I, our tax benefits. I made I made a pledge as well in okay. our Discord not too long ago because someone commented about our audio, which is a good point. I'm turning down my audio now a bit. Uh, we've been doing this for over 100 episodes and our audio is not of bad our anymore. Yeah. <laughs> our audio is not bad compared to how, how it started, but we've yeah. got a long way to go. So when I moved out, whenever that is, hopefully in the next year, uh, and I'm starting to save up. I'm, first thing I'm getting is a really nice new computer, and then I want to try and start investing in like a mic and sound stuff, and like actually make this sound competent. Yeah, um, yeah. But for now, things will go a while longer. I've turned on my mic a bit. Hopefully, it's fine. Um, but yes, we are here with discovering SCP once again. This time, it's just Tan and I. And you may be asking yourselves, but Darnell, all you guys do is constantly talk about how you have a million guests. Uh, that's true, but they have to wait. Yeah, sorry, guests. <laughs> Um, so yes, Tanhony, uh, how does it feel to be just you and me again? I don't care. Sorry, it feels really good. good. <laughs> it's like uh, putting me on an emotional roller coaster here. Uh, how many articles do you have for me today? How many articles? One. Just one. Oh. Okay, so we got a long one this week. All right, well, I have stalled long enough. How about you go and put that article in my face? Absolutely. Let's throw it out there for the for the viewing public. See what they think. <laughs> you guys can't tell, but I'm using every ounce of my strength to not talk about Elden Ring and Dark Souls and just keep this related to SCP. This is I'm SCP trying so hard right now. This is the Dark Souls SCP. The Pattern Screamer, it's called. By oh, this Pattons. is a short one. It's not a short one. We'll be done. Okay. Wait, th this is our first pattern screamer, right? Because I hear the term pattern screamer nonstop. It's like one of those things people constantly make jokes about. I don't know. So, like, is this where I finally learn about them? Yeah. Is sure. this the first one? Is this their origin? Let's find out more. But well, before okay. you get started well, reading the article, article so. don't forget to fill up your Estus flasks and use any powders you might have <laughs> on your sword. This one says take out those boiled prawns. So, a little tip from me. Where do you buy boiled prawns in Elden Ring again? Oh no, <laughs> I've done it. <laughs> get out those boiled prawns, gamers, and put on your fire grease. It's time to get cooking. Let's forget about a dark ring or whatever the fuck it's called. Yes, okay. SCP 3930, start reading, reader boy. Item number SCP 3930, object class NAR, North America. <laughs> North object class North America, I like that. Special containment procedures. Individuals assigned to the SCP are to monitor the S five C nine perimeter established near Usink, Russia, Russia, and follow orders from on site command. Individuals assigned to the SCP it's made of word that nothing within the perimeter not that there are, There is literally it. two sentences and you cannot manage them. Individuals we are off to an amazing <laughs> start. Okay, let's pause the recording. Let's pause the reading for a minute. Viewers. Okay. I've been doing these readings for a hundred episodes now. <laughs> so much labor. And the, the second I make a single mistake, like I tripped over a pebble, <laughs> this guy's into mockery. The taskmaster shows his true colors, if you will. <laughs> and there are, two <laughs> there are two options in comedy. There's making fun of you for making a mistake, or there's, or there's like improv yes and. And neither of these things go well for us. So I need I need you to be here with me now. I've Can you read the sentence? I've Can always, you get through? I've it? always been with you, but I don't know if you've always been with me. Individuals hey. assigned to the SCP has been made aware there is nothing within the perimeter. As SCP thirty nine thirty. You wonder if I'm exist. with you? What did I just say? Look, did, did you know, do you know look, what I just said? Yeah, you said the SCP thirty nine thirty does not exist and you said that there's nothing within the perimeter of it. I was paying attention, don't worry. You say I'm not with you though? I want you to look down at your feet. What, what, what about when there was one set of footprints on the beach? <laughs> if you if you look down at your feet, you'll see a, a name scrawled into the carpet. What the fuck? Summon sign, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> put me in, coach. I'll read the after we put in these input authorization credentials. But what about when there was one set of footprints near the gargoyles? <laughs> that was when I carried you. <laughs> <laughs> Say my scan, G. 
All right, all right. I'll read. You know what? You're right. No, 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 the remainder of this file is level 5, 39, 30 classified with restrictions. Shall we input those authorization credentials? Yeah. Short it. article, this buffoon. Damn. See, if this was a Series 6 article, I would have had to, like, put a number in on a keypad and, like, found the secret link in a picture and then, like, pasted it into my a separate browser with a special yeah. plugin. I hate modern SCP. <laughs> no, that started, wasn't my implication. I just started, I was just like, five Twitter wars. <laughs> Yeah, you can't say anything even as a goof or else, like, 8 million people will take it out of context and get very angry on Twitter for likes. I had up <laughs> my version of my one. The following file is level 5 classified with restrictions. Unauthorized access is forbidden. I feel like it goes without saying, but okay. Fair enough. Fair yeah. Enough. yeah. Doesn't that go for all authorized Unauthor- things? Unauthorized like, access point? is allowed. <laughs> I guess I guess the idea is, like, if the foundation says it's forbidden, it's like, ooh. I don't know, though. 3930. Level 5, top secret. Containment class, esoteric. Ah, shit, one of these. North America. What the fuck is esoteric? It means it's not a normal class. It's a weird one. Destruction class, etchy. Risk class. (laughs) 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 I'm not going to make the low-hanging fruit joke. I'm holding the down. I already made the low-hanging fruit joke by saying it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> That's not what it says. Um, SCP... It says Eki, I think. Yeah, no, it says actually. SCP thirty nine thirty. Here, there's a picture of like some woods and a lake and the mountains. <laughs> I hope there's no bodies oh, in that. You don't recognize the bodies in the lake. Yes, yeah, dude. All I do is make the low hanging fruit joke. That's this whole podcast. File administrator notice: only seven living individuals have permitted access to this file. Okay, so um, this does us two. The fucking council. And all five of our viewers. Well, aren't <laughs> aren't there thirteen oh fives? Does that mean like some of them just got left out? I assume so. Huh. Modified special containment procedures for the purpose of ongoing containment of the SCP it is important for all personnel assigned to it, outside the personnel permitted to have access to this file, to understand that the SCP does not exist nor has ever existed. Personnel currently assigned to it who assert its existence will be reassigned and given a full psychological examination to ensure their understanding that the SCP does not exist. Individuals who are unable to do so are to be remitted to the current 3930 research lead for termination. So is this like the Gaslight SCP? Hmm. All personnel assigned to SCP-3930 must understand that, despite any language or orders that may imply otherwise due to their content, SCP-3930 does not exist. SCP-3930 is contained at its location of discovery. Access to the region containing it is strictly forbidden. And the perimeter has been created around it roughly one kilometer in diameter. Any unauthorized individuals crossing the perimeter with intent to approach the SCP are to be terminated on site. The seven individuals permitted to access this file have total executive authority over the containment of the SCP and administration of personnel assigned to it. The sustained non-existence of the S- of SCP-3930 is the containment procedure for SCP-3930. I'm so... Okay, so the whole point is, it doesn't exist, but it will exist if certain things aren't followed. So the goal is to make sure it continues to not exist. So I'm guessing a pattern screamer has something to do with like timelines or reality or like human bullshit, right? Um, I'm doing that thing where I try to guess what's going on based on the containment procedure. You've never done this I'm before. trying to... F- Why have you changed so much? <laughs> uh, uh, so, um, like, because I hear the word pattern screamer constantly, and I imagine it's not in regards to just this SCP. So, is this like the origin of a genre, or like what's going on? I feel here? like the, the pattern screamer originally was just like a generic term for spooky, spooky monster that was thrown around. This was like, I think it's like one of the ones that solidified what it actually means. Okay, I got you. So, it used to just be a term, and it then used just to be like, like, like a, a standard it. term for ominous threats. Like, you'd find, like, a tablet okay. and be like, this is from the Martians, Dread the Pattern Screamer. And now it's just, like, Pattern Screamer is what people call themselves jokingly on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. I got it's you. It's been ruined It's like putting Redacted in the middle of a Modern sentence. Modern SCP fan base, who I hate. 
<laughs> Not to I'm just trying to make an observation. The whole point of this podcast is that okay. So this podcast has kind of changed directory, right? Because the whole point is me reacting. Yeah, since as episode who one, know. from episode two onwards, has become like a shit show. Yeah, the whole thing is me being introduced to SCP. But not only have we done this for like two years now. Uh, oh yeah, our two year anniversary happened. By the way, when was that? Um, uh, tomorrow, technically. Holy shit! It's the anniversary special, I guess. No, no. Yeah, tomorrow, as of as of us recording, by the time this is out, it'll have been two years. Woo! Uh, but um, and also we're now a part of the community, so there are things I. But the thing is, I still don't know everything about SCP because of the premise. So there are things I see on social media constantly that I don't know about. So that's just me making an observation. That's not me trying to make like a searing like, hey, you guys just use the same jokes and stuff. Anomalous slander. Um, I just like genuinely like everyone's always like, OMG, you're such a pattern screamer, or like not like yeah, that, but you know, Gemini. people are like, yeah, it's people are like, I'm a certified pattern screamer. Like, what the Gemini? fuck does that mean? I'm not. I, I'm a Virgo, I think. <laughs> sure I was born out. in September. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Let's get into it. Uh, yeah, let's keep reading. SCP-3930 is a static void located within a one kilometer, kilometer perimeter near Yusin, Russia, established by Soviet scientists in the early 1970s. SCP-3930 does not emit or absorb light or sound, does not have shape or texture, cannot be passed through, cannot be interacted with, cannot be manipulated in any way, and has no dimension. This alone has explained a lot about why people want to be pattern screamers. Through extensive testing using a variety of techniques, Foundation Research has been able to certify with 99.999% accuracy that absolutely nothing exists within the region described as SCP-3930. Wait a minute, is this Finland? No. Finland's bigger than You know than the meme about, like, the world's, the world's population, like, within a, a margin of error, Finland may or may not exist, and this is, like, a thing that doesn't exist with 99.999% certainty do you see what i'm getting at here i don't know what you're talking about okay so there was a, a post somewhere on the internet i don't remember about how like there are what seven billion something people in the world and if you take a point zero zero one percent margin of standard error plus or minus for like census errors then technically the entire population of finland like could theoretically not exist and th that was used to support for, like, why Finland doesn't exist. And this is, like, kind of near that, like, oh. area in Europe. So I was wondering if the, well, the, the punchline was going to be that this Finland didn't exist or not. Um, Finland is something bigger than a kilometer. But you you don't believe that, right? Oh, you know, I, I missed the kilometer perimeter part. <laughs> and I doubt I don't think it's in Russia. <laughs> yeah, that too. It's not in Russia. It's, like, near your guy. It's closer to you than Russia, right? Yes. You know, of course, I, that Finland does exist, right? You don't no, question that. It doesn't. I personally don't believe Finland exists. Anomalous Do you know anyone from Finland? <laughs> wow, guys, I sure. I just came back from my trip from Finland. Let's keep reading. Despite this, subjects exposed to SCP-3930 will invariably describe the space as containing flora and fauna similar to those in the surrounding area, as well as a structure somewhere within the non-existent space. How individuals are, are capable of perceiving SCP-3930 is currently unknown, though several hypotheses have been produced. See Addendum 3 for details. As SCP-3930 cannot be passed through or interacted with, as it is not something that exists, extant objects or entities cannot enter SCP-3930. Nevertheless, individuals who attempt to approach it and go into it will nonetheless be perceived as doing so by other observers. The moment the individual passes the non-existing border of SCP-3930, they cease to exist. Despite this, outside observers will continue to perceive the individuals who pass into it for some time afterwards, until such time as they no longer do. Wait, what? So is it like a wormhole, or like a, a, like a reality fuck spot? It's like, literally nothing, but you think there's something there, basically. Okay. In summary... And then there's... Right. SCP-3930 does not exist. It is not a physical location, point in time, singularity, vacuum, extramental space, meta-construct, or any other extant descriptive, as a requirement for any such descriptive is existence, which the SCP lacks. It cannot be said to be anything regardless of perceived properties. As it does not exist, it cannot contain anything that exists. Due to this, anything that attempts to pass through or enter the SCP, which is impossible due to it not existing, will also cease to exist. Despite all of the above, human beings will still perceive the SCP as perceptible, and things that become non-existent due to it are similarly perceptible. 
Most notably, certain attributes of the SCP perceived by cognizant beings are altered significantly by the number of individuals who both are aware of the SCP and are aware of the fact that it is affected by awareness. What the? Okay, okay, okay. So, I know this probably isn't it, and there's some more complicated explanation, but I think the only way my brain can, can process this is it's kind of like mass hysteria, right? Or like a mass hallucination, where, mm. where like, people, it's affected and is seen by people believing they see it, even though it doesn't exist. Maybe. Oh my god, I'm so con- I'm, I'm getting a little lost here. Let's just keep going, we'll figure it out. Lastly, the effect human perception has on the SCP's perceived properties cannot be diminished with agnostics or even natural death. Ew. The only known method to affect the nature of its perceived abilities is for the individual who has previously perceived the SCP to enter it and become non-existent. While the effect this has on the SCP is not immediate, it will diminish over time until becoming stable again after roughly 31 days. The highest number of individuals able to perceive the SCP while still maintaining the void stability is 10, seven of which are accounted for by containment procedures, two allowed for testing purposes, and one for any potential civilian interference. That seems like an extremely dangerous, like you only have room for one person to see it. What if a couple is hiking? (laughs) We're in Russia. Oh. Damn. Damn. Addendum 1. Discovery. The records of the SCP's original discovery were lost in the dissolution of the Soviet intelligence community, but it is believed that the SCP was likely discovered on more than one occasion by individuals who, by virtue of attempting to interact with it, no longer exist. Notably, near the end of the Soviet Union, the SCP-3930 was known about only by state scientists and researchers, and it is not believed that any members of GRU Division P were made aware of the SCP. If you don't remember those, we did an episode on them. They were like, the Soviet... they were like Russian SCP, yeah. yeah, Soviet SCP. I got you. If the state scientists were aware of the nature of the SCP, this was likely by design. Can I make a, a guess that may or may not ruin the tension in story if I'm right? Okay. Uh, so I'm seeing this whole thing where it's like the only possible way to like stop being counted is if you go and stop existing by throwing yourself in it, right? Right. So I'm already foreseeing a situation where the numbers go over and there's like some long, really sad addendum and then some researchers throw themselves in or researcher to like make it go back under 10. That's what I'm calling right now because I can smell this plot from a mile away. And if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. But I think I'm right. Okay. Locking that in. The number of individuals who had perception of the SCP before these containment procedures were enacted is unknown. Their records indicate that the state scientists experienced extreme difficulties in both containing the anomaly and doing research on it. Their lack of proper understanding of the SCP's anomalous qualities led to a significant loss of life, which further exacerbated the situation regarding SCP-3930. By the time Foundation operatives had discovered it, only a small number of the original research team members remained, the rest having been lost to SCP-3930. The implementation of its containment procedures also came at the cost of an unfortunate loss of life. More information yeah. on this addendum three. I, I know what I'm on. And then we have number two, exploration log. Exploration into SCP-3930 is impossible, as per the previously established understanding of it. Regardless, outside observers are capable of perceiving individuals who enter the SCP, and as such seem to exist, and even receiving audio transmissions from them. Notably, audio and video equipment does not function properly near the SCP, Video cameras are not capable of capturing a non-entity, and footage of the SCP is subject to the same anomalous visual perceptive abnormalities as regular observation of it. The same is consistent with audio recordings. In short, all audio and video equipment stops functioning the moment, ent- mo- the moment it enters the SCP, though observers will continue to perceive proper functioning, even if the discrepancy is noted. So, this is, like, too much for my brain. So, the, like, let's say you put a microphone in there and you're listening to it. The microphone will stop existing and thus will not work, but you will think it's working. Right. Okay. S- such as alarms or warnings that the equipment is malfunctioning or is disconnected from its source. Gotcha. Okay. The following is an audio oh. log transcription penned by 3930-7-4, the fourth member of Foundation staff, to be the seventh individual allowed to access the file, as he perceived it. During the recording of this log, he spoke into a microphone, perceived a response, and then repeated the response into another recording device. As such, it is worth mentioning once more that the following is simply a conversation that they appear to have had with a new, of a human who did not exist at the time of this recording, with both individuals' be, dialogue being spoken by 7-4. Slash, slash 
slash free slash free moderate this event and confirm the accuracy of the perceived responses as well as curated the log afterwards. I'm not gonna lie, I know there's a footnote explaining it, but like once they threw three three in there, I really don't understand what the fuck this like The third person to be number three. Is. Okay, so the seventh person to be number four. Well, the fourth person to be number seven. But it's right. Why, why is it backwards? The fourth person to be number seven. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. So is there a reason they can't have their identities and they just have to go by their number designations? I mean it's just for like record yeah, keeping. That feels insanely more complicated than just using full names. Well, because then you have to look <laughs> up and see which one that, that is. I guess. All right, should I be uh, the thir- the 3930 guy or the D guy? You be the D guy. <clears throat> okay. All right, D124, I need to start walking forwards. Can you tell me what you see in front of you? Jace, the woods. Any animals or wildlife? No. All right, proceed forward. Silence. You're approaching the boundary of the anomaly. Do, do you see anything now? I don't. No. Still just... At this point, D-124... Oh, do you want to yeah, do this? Yeah, no, no, you, you can do this. <laughs> At this point, D-124 disappeared into SCP-3930 and ceased to exist. Audio monitoring equipment confirmed that his radio had ceased to function. Regardless, neither 3930-74 or 3930-33 noticed this. Trees and bushes and stuff. Continue forward. Hey, hang on! There's something up here in the clearing. Some kind of building. Can you describe it for me? Yeah, it's, uh, short. There's a bunch of, uh, I think it's like an apartment building. It's really overgrown, though. Like, it's, uh, been abandoned for a while. How, how big is this structure? Well, I don't know. Maybe 100 feet long? I count six doors on this side. Looks like I might curve around in the back. Go ahead and continue forward. Sure. Uh, I actually, by the way, I just noticed something. There's a sound I can hear now, but it's uh, really quiet. I thought it was the wind or the grass a moment ago, but it's definitely neither of those. What, what does it sound like? Honestly, I don't know. It's faint. Roger, keep it up, us updated on that. I'm just imagining, like, a very quiet TV static slowly building up (laughs) through the interview. All right, I'm up on the bu- Anamos, can you edit that in? All right, I'm up on the building. Definitely some kind of apartment building. White walls, brown doors, wood. There's, uh, I guess some kind of other building over here. Maybe an office. Can you open any of doors? I can try. Hang on. That one's locked. This one, too. Hang on. I'm looking at the window, trying to see if there's anything in here, but, uh, it's just dark. I can't see beyond the curtains. Please continue to check the doors. Yeah. Uh, oh, got one! Let's see. Definitely, uh, definitely nobody's been here in a while. It's dark, dusty, just one bedroom, I think. Not much furniture, some chairs, and a small bookshelf. Nothing on it, though. Let me look at the bedroom. Uh, twin bed, chest of drawers, but they're... they're empty. The bed is made, curtains are drawn everywhere. Hang on. Sounds like curtains being opened. <laughs> this window here good. just faces the other side of the, uh, of the clearing here. This building's a big L shape. It goes on down that way a bit. Can you turn that light off? It's too goddamn bright. D-124 continues to search the room and attach the bathroom for the following five minutes. Eventually, he's asked to leave by... Thirty-nine, thirty-seven, four. Wait. So, can they see what he's seeing? And well, I imagine that no, it's like audio. So he's telling them what he's oh, doing. Okay. So he was like in a hallway, and he opened a door, and it led to like a house into like a well, it's like an apartment building. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, all right. Let me uh, hang on. What is it? I did I open these blinds earlier? What? The blinds! The fuck! I drew the curtains back earlier, I mean. When I walked into the bedroom. I don't know why. No, I definitely did. I remember it specifically, because then I looked out that window. I opened these curtains. Is there something else in here, too? We don't have reason to believe, so no. Then we'll close the fucking curtains. Why are they closed? We don't know that. Of course you don't know that, but... Man, I definitely opened these. 
because I stepped over here and looked down and I said, uh, well, I said that there was somebody out there or, uh, I don't remember what I said, actually. Maybe I was wrong. It's weird. Come again? Nothing. I just, uh, guess I'll keep going here. So, by the way, it, after that point where it cut off, like, towards the beginning, it sounds like 3930's reading both of these parts in the playback, right? Well, he, no, what's happening is he's reading to another recording what, what's being said and it's being transcribed from there. Oh, okay. Next room here is more of the same. It's, uh, it's backwards from the other one, though. This room has a TV in it. Is the TV on? What? No! Nobody's been in here in weeks, maybe years. I don't think that... Actually, you know what? The TV's still warm. Somebody's been in here, too. Let me see if... What is it? It's on, but it's strange. The channels keep skipping around. Just images, pictures, black and white, a backwards ocean, mirrors and uh, faces, a funeral pyre. It keeps coming back to one image, black background with uh, dark shapes floating around. More than one, they're really small, hard to see, fading in and out. Can you hear that? We cannot. It's that uh, sound again, not coming from the TV. Maybe from outside? This, uh... uh Come again? Well, it's just that... This is gonna sound crazy, I know. But I swear I came into this room through a door on that wall, and now the door isn't there. There's a window there instead. Can you see out the window? I can, uh... Alright, this is gonna sound really crazy. But I can't open the curtains. When I go to pull them back, they're just more behind them. And more behind those. The end of your exits to the room? There's a... At this point, a telephone in the mobile research station began ringing in the same room as 393074 and 393033, the latter of whom stood to answer it. As he did, 393074 described hearing another phone ringing on the other end of the audio transmitter, near D-124. There's a phone ringing. I don't remember it being here. Hang on. Hey, hey don't... No, oh, that's you. Sorry. <laughs> oh, this is... Fuck. <laughs> that's the All right. Hello? Hello? Yes, yes we're, we're watching. watching. Listening, Listening in, on, in this. on this. Can you, Can hear, you me? hear me? Uh, we did pretty all right. At this point, 393074 notes severe echo originating from his audio receiver coming from D124. Hello? Fuck me. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Can you hear Can me? You? Am I speaking Am to I you right speaking now? Am I speaking to you right now? What, what is, is this? this? Hey, hang up the phone. Hang up the goddamn phone. Oh, thank God. 39 <laughs> Hangs hang up the telephone. It appears confused and disoriented. On the other end of the audio receiver, D124 expresses similar confusion. If we weren't concentrating so hard to do that, I was going to make a dumb joke. Uh, have you ever played Xenoblade? No. Me neither, but there's like a meme song, and it's like, Hello? Is anybody there? <laughs> I'm all alone. I need a gun. <laughs> I need a bigger gun. <laughs> What was that? Did you hear any of that? D124, the end exits from the room you're currently in. Yeah, there's a stairwell here. I can try that. Roger, please do. This is a skipper voice, right? Or am I flubbing it? That's the skipper voice. I uh, no mistake. Okay. Thank good. Thank goodness. All right, I went down the stairs and now I'm in uh, another room. No, wait, is it? Hey, I forgot to mention earlier, but my skin feels really strange. What do you mean? Uh, it's sort of chalky. And when I brush my hand against my arm, it's just sort of, uh... I don't know how to describe it. It's like it just stops being there for a minute. Noted. Can you describe your surroundings now? There's the same couch as the previous room, but there's something different about this one. Maybe the room's the wrong size? It, uh, feels a little bigger. Things are more spread out. Can you get back up the stairs? Stairs? The stairs you just ascended down. What stairs? You just ascended down a flight of stairs to get into this room. I know this is supposed to be like a very emotional moment of like uh, this guy, clearly everything's changing and he's losing his like reality, but this kind of just sounds like every fucking D&D game where someone's cutting out. <laughs> no, I came through the front door right over here. 
It's weird. The door's locked now. Are you sure you can't hear that, by the way? Can you describe the noise you're hearing? Like, uh, you ever listen to static? Sure. Sometimes you hear things in the white space, yeah? Your brain fi- Oh, thank God the D-class is expositioning to us. Your brain filling in the gaps. The sound is like that sound, the sound your brain makes, only without the static. It's really not very loud, but it's really noticeable. I think, uh, let me see. There should be a door out of here somewhere. Let me look. E-124 continues to look through the room he's currently in for an exit for the following four hours. Despite attempts by the control group to assist E-124 in leaving the room, he's unable to do so. I'm noticing something again. I don't know why this is all taking so long. The space in between everything is really big now. It's taking me ten minutes now to walk from the sofa to the TV. I need a twenty to get to the kitchen. What? Since when? Why didn't you mention this earlier? I don't know. I... Uh... Listen, I'll just put my summon sign down. (laughs) Calling 39374. He's he's got, he's like naked with the club. (laughs) It's this, there's a hidden wall. (laughs) Yeah, there's a message reading hidden path ahead. And he keeps banging into the wall. Oh my god, it's back to Dark Souls, baby. Hello. There's a man outside. He wants to know if I'm listening. Am I? Yeah. All right. Wait, what? Yeah, I am. That's sorry, that threw me for a loop. All right. He says there's a way out, going down through the uh, through the floor. Said if I lean back enough, I'll just go there. So, silence. D one twenty four does not respond for thirty eight minutes. Thirty nine thirty seven four and thirty nine thirty three three do not speak for thirty eight minutes. Wait, noise. Are you there yet? It's further than I thought it would be. I think I'm starting to get it. Are you listening? Are you listening? Oh my god, what the fuck is happening? (laughs) It's too trippy. Good, don't stop listening. I'm down below here now. See, I thought the things I was saying were something to do with me, but they're really not. I'm not really saying them. Yeah, this makes a lot more sense. Not to me, but maybe to you. Maybe it doesn't matter. So you know what I said earlier about listening to static, right? Same sort of thing's happening with my eyes now. Filling in the blanks. What do you see? There was a hole in the world here. This place got pulled down into it like a drain. People, too. I could actually see it now. The whole building, drawn into the tiny little spot. Racks ring out and broken. Alright, yeah, 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 yeah! This is a response! Like a reaction! Nature doesn't abhor a vacuum, but people do. Your minds aren't made for this, right? You stare at the stars and see things because that's what you do. Making sense of it. Order is a man-made concept. Can you describe the space you're in now? Yeah, it's aetheral. Thank you, I'll be here all week. Uh, I'm not. What do you mean? You know, I'm not, actually. As soon as you realize it, this will all be over. As soon as I realize what? You just have to look away from the screen and you stop seeing the, uh... You stop seeing the patterns. I'm... If you look away, you'll stop seeing me, and you'll you'll stop hearing me. So he is looking on a screen. You'll stop hearing me, and that's what I'm hearing. That's what I've been hearing this whole time. Yes, that makes sense. Because if you, if you blink, you lose it, and once it's gone, it's nothing again. So they try to get your attention, and if they lose it, they're nothing, and... Slow down, I need you to... No, no, no! You look away, and the patterns go away. You stop listening, and you don't hear them. They're nothing, and now I'm... Don't you get it? Ah... Uh. At this point, there's a minor dip in electrical systems as the on-site generator activates. Both 3930-74 and 3930-33 immediately become aware that the audio transmitter is no longer functional. Attempts to contact D124 fail. Oh, I get it. So the second he stepped through, he stopped existing. But because human brains can't really comprehend that, it kept thinking he was existing. Yeah, just and then making shit it all. Yes. Okay. So there's sort of like a... a then it's not like degrading weird... the longer it went. There... Exactly. So, like, we're not sure how much of this is real and how much of this... And probably all of it was bullshit. That's really cool. Because it can't all totally be bullshit because they very clearly explained what was going on. And I don't think the brain would be capable of that self-awareness. I say that as though we don't recognize our own brains. But you know what I mean, right? Mm. So I'm wondering how much was fake, how much was real, how much was influenced. But that's actually really cool in concept. So that's all a pattern screamer is. Well, maybe we'll find out more as an interview. 
Uh, are there more articles like this, or is this just like the one? There's more. There's a whole tag for it. Okay. Are they are they all places, or are some of them people? Because like, like I said, a lot of people on Twitter are like, I'm a battering screamer. Okay, cool. Addendum 3. Interview with Mine 30 one one. Ooh. The following excerpt is taken for an interview log conducted with Dr. Andrei Fa- Vasilev, a Soviet scientist who was found operating the containment procedures for the SCP before the beginning of Foundation intervention. Dr. Vasilev was eventually offered a position within the Foundation and became 3930-1-1 shortly afterwards. The interviewer was Dr. Piotr Kuzkin, translation provided by Dr. Simon Pitrikow. No one be mean to us about the pronunciations. You can be mean to um, them now. I did not the one who read them, so be mean to Tanhony. That's a good time. Uh, do you want to be impression. Kuzkin or Vas- do you want to be Kuzkin or Vasiliev? Um, I'll be Kuz- I'll be uh, Kuzkin. Okay, I'll be the guy himself, Vasiliev. What is it? It isn't anything, not in any measurable sense. It's a static, uncompromised void, a space where nothing exists. Well, how did it get here? We don't know. It was found, whether by someone within the state or an outside player, and we arrived first. Well, what do you know about it? Know about it? What is there to know? There's nothing there. Nothing for us to measure. Nothing for us to test. Things that cross its threshold disappear and cease to be. We've tried sending in soldiers with recording equipment, but they all met the same fate. What happened to the rest of your team? Ah, Reception is key. Everything you can test for will tell you there's an absence there, yes? But you look at it, and you still see forest and trees and even animals. Walk far enough in, and you might see a building or people. But none of it's real. By the time you see the building, in whatever shape it takes, you're not real either. You've become little more than a reflection of yourself perceived by someone else's mind. This thing, this void, it's a hateful mirror. It desires you to look at it. The more who look, the more hateful it becomes. What about the rest of your team? There were too many of us. Too many of us stared into the void and it started screaming. Screaming? When you approach it, you'll start to hear it. So faint, it might be nothing, more or less, but a noise. Something queer has happened. Human minds have evolved to see patterns where there are none. So when cast over a space where there is nothing at all, the minds begin to create something from nothing. What you hear is something rudimentary, an almost imperceptible sentience. It is a flash along the edge of the void, as our minds attempt to perceive something that isn't there, and it hates! What do you mean it hates? Why why would it hate anything? How would you know? Because there were too many of us. Each member of our team cognizant of the void, each trying to perceive it. These flashes, these tiny screamers, eventually they began to, to bind together. Make no mistake, Dr. Kuzkin, they are not real! They are to the neutrino what the neutrino is to us, less than nothing. But they are somehow aware of their nothingness, and they are hateful. Their existence, I believe, is torment. They hate the universe for being. They hate themselves for being. And they hate us for making them be. They are nothing but hate. So it's not just the brain making up stuff to fill the gaps. That stuff then kind of becomes real for a yeah. time, yeah? Okay. Given enough time, and with enough of us trying to look into this void, something crawled out of it. Afterwards, there were ten of us. This anomaly has been stable since... That's so ominous, something crawled out. <laughs> it's much like Ugh. a slimy bloodborne monster. <laughs> yeah. It was Tanhony. <laughs> he fucking... You, like when an invader comes in... Fears. Like when an invader comes into your world and it like pools out of the ground, that was you and you were all red. Oh, fun of course. <laughs> <laughs> what came out? How long have you been here? Decades. Why did you call for relief? Once you've heard the screamer, you can't unhear it. Calling for relief would just be damning another soul. The other day, the remainder of your scientists disappeared. Where are they? They entered the void. Why? There are too many of us now. You brought twelve and there were eight of us. There can be no more than ten. Once you perceive the void, your mind cannot be made to forget it. There are thirteen of us now, but there must be no more than ten. You talk about this void like it's some kind of intelligent creature. How can this nothingness be something intelligent? They are not the same thing. The void is what it is, a region of non-existence. It is unfathomable and unalterable and we know nothing about it. But the pattern scream. Oh, so this is where all the pattern screamers come from, and it kind of validates all the previous, like, generic monsters. 
as like things that were perceived, right? Well, uh, I, when I say Gemini monsters, I mean it was like vague, ominous threat. Okay, but that's where these threats emerged from, is this thing. Maybe, maybe. So anytime there's more than ten, some a new pattern screamer is born out of this. Well, maybe, maybe you think about it, maybe it's a bit too literally there. Okay. But the pattern screamers are, yes, in some way intelligent. But they are only intelligent because they are us. They are our reflection in this hateful mirror. Off-camera activity. Dr. Kuzkin looks away. Dr. Vasiliev looks at the camera for a moment. All right. Is there anything else? There can be no more than ten. I will go into this void, and then two of your own must follow. And if they do not? Silence. End log. This one was a bit to wrap my head around. I actually think it's very high the concept, word, yeah. Not, not only that, but I think knowing the word coming in honestly hurt my experience with it. Because I think I kept trying to think of it as a thing. Because all the time I saw that as like a thing. It's like, oh, I'm a pattern screamer. Oh, I have the pattern screamer role. I thought it was like something more tangible. But it's more like this incredibly conceptual, high concept, vague, like sort of perception based thing. But things aren't quite born from it. You can't take it completely literal. There's like some symbolism I'm clearly missing. Uh, very bizarre. I... I love it and I hate it. I, I love it for a couple of reasons. I like that it's trying to do something really big and really cool. I like that they spend a lot of time on it and it gets really freaky. And I like that it's definitely unique. Not that something needs to be unique or brand new to be good, but I think it's a factor. Uh, what I don't like is at times it feels like, especially for when it's based on the person's perception, they give a lot of t too much information away. Like the D class just sort of explaining everything to them. If this thing hates so much, why would it explain itself to the people, right? I also think uh, it's it's a bit too high concept. I don't want to say that because it just makes me sound like a dumbass. But I think it kind of like... Uh, I could understand why a lot of people misunderstand this. And I imagine people who, like Pattern Screamers, get upset when they see people who don't get them, and I feel like that might be a thing. I don't know. I'm not quite sure how I feel on it. I had fun reading it with you. I'll pr I'd probably give this one, like, a 9 out of 10. Um, I have to log into Wikidot, of course. But it, this one was just really weird to wrap my head around. I think there were parts of it I got and parts of it I clearly didn't. I will admit that. Unlike unlike the uh, the uh, the the one we read that people thought I didn't get, yeah, that I've already forgotten. You didn't you quite understand that one? <laughs> yeah, of course. Clearly, this one I actually feel like there were parts I made. You should not feel like <laughs> But. Uh, but I think part of that that made it hard was I came into this with so many people memeing about them being pattern screamers that I thought it was something more tangible than I think it is, if that makes sense. Which made it harder for me to try and grasp. Because I kept being like, like you said where I was thinking too literally, like I kept thinking, oh, so things come out of this and get birthed, etc. Mm. Um, what do you think about it? What are your thoughts? Or is there really anything like you could it. offer me that you think would help explain it? Uh, I really like it. It's like, I always think about this. Like, I don't know if you have played like, mods. Like uh, I played Garrus. I existed in the 2010s. Uh, yes, um, like Garrus mod. When like there's a map without a skybox, like whatever you're looking and at, it's is like all purple and black. Infinitely over the where the skybox would be. That's, that's always what makes me think of it. Okay, I guess that kind of makes sense. It's like the texture not found. Exactly. So it just puts in whatever's okay. around it, like the forest in this case. Maybe a building. And this is this is not the only Pattern Scream related thing. I just am checking because you yeah, said the title the, of the article is Pattern Scream. It's the Pattern Scream, yeah. Okay, so this is like the one. And this was written by who again? And um, this is by DJ Cactus. Ah, it's our buddy Classic Cactus. Classic um, Cactus. Classic Cactus Maneuver. Wow. And this was written in 2018, so it's actually not that old. Very, very interesting. So, I know you said they were kind of Pattern Screamers as vague on the starts before, but I take it this was like the Pattern Screamer renaissance. I think this is one that, like, solidified what it was, and then it sort of got used... It, like, it started being, being used a lot more afterwards. It's also very bizarre for me that we're in Series 7 now, and this was like a Series 4 SCP, and it was only four years ago. Mm. Like, do you know what I mean? Because SCP started, yeah, like, what, It feels like part of, like, historical at this point. It definitely, I feel like as SCP has grown and more people get into it, it accelerates its growth, right? Like, I feel like Series 1 and 2, people say they're iconic because they were just there first, but I also think those series were, like, a lot longer, if that makes sense, whereas the later series have kind of been, like, rapidly coming, right? Like, it didn't even take a year to get between 6 to 7, did it? Yeah, it's been accelerating. Soon we're going to have, like, two series in two days. 
<laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, eventually we'll reach, like, a singularity point where there's a new series, like, every few months. It's pretty crazy to think about. There's so many people writing and creating, and that's awesome, but it's also, like, a lot of information. And that's another thing I think that's cool about SCP, right? So, like, uh, forgive me for bringing up Elden Ring, but I swear I have a point this time. Uh, when Elden Ring first came out, you, you were a part of this, Tan. You saw on Twitter how everyone sort of discovered different things, right? Yeah. And they would try and, like, vaguely hint about them and be like, you should check this out, go here. I feel like that's kind of what SCP is. Not only are there so many, but they're being made so much that no person has read or watched every SCP. And yeah. if you truly you somehow have, I promise you... <laughs> yeah, I promise you haven't heard of them. So there's kind of this cool part of the SCP community where people like trade articles that others might not have heard of. Although I do think the downside is I think realistically there are a a number of SCPs that are the – I'm not saying popular isn't bad um, or mainstream, but you know what I mean? Like they're the ones that everyone reads and there are a lot that almost no one has seen. You know, like a lot of ten ones that have only been voted on ten times and just exist. But I think there's kind of a cool element to the SCP wiki where there's like always something new to discover if you're willing to dig for it, even if it's not a masterpiece or something. And that you can kind of like trade articles with people and dig into more obscure stuff. That's kind of fun. Um, but yeah, I don't know where I was going with that thought. I just wanted to say that was really cool. Uh, so that was our SCP for this week, right? Yeah. And that was the last episode. That was the last episode. episode. <laughs> It would be such a weird last episode to be like episode 103 or 102, <laughs> whatever this is. Uh, so during that time, we I got a lot of DMs about stuff, but we're gonna so we're gonna read comments and then get to those because um, people were like, "Did you get those two like in the group chat?" Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> I was like, "What the fuck?" We're gonna have to deal um, with this. Someone's gonna have to fucking die. Yeah, but we have comments to read, but my point is, I don't know if we have enough comments to even reach an hour. Is there anything you want to talk about or discuss we'll see. <laughs> about an SCP or? Or Aetheral Space, or just life? Um, we'll find out after the comments. Let's see where we are. <laughs> okay, let me refresh the page real quick. So our last episode with Dr. Gears, that was a ton of fun, by the way. Dr. Gears is a great guy. Um, okay, here we go. Comments. Uh, Comedy Man Kelp, good to see you again, buddy, says, Man, I don't even have a dumb joke or anything for this one. Getting Gears on the podcast is cool as fuck. Um, yeah, he was honestly super, I super know. great I did, like, this was, like, the dream month. guest, really, from the start of the podcast. Like, these one of, in my head, that was one of the people we were absolutely never gonna get. <laughs> but we did it! Didn't I mention Gears? There was someone I wanted to get on, you're like, there's no way we'll ever get them. I feel like it was Gears or someone It might have been Salman Corvey. It might have been Salman Corvey. Well, we got him. Yeah. Uh, but no, honestly, Gears is really, just a really cool guy. And that's and why he's I back think... next. No, no, I can't say that. That's not true. No, 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 no. Well, wasn't he on another podcast too, or am I insane? I thought he was on Sean Saxon's thing. Uh, yeah. I might be. But we did it film. first. Don't look at the dates. It was us first. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, I think it's really great he gets involved with the community. I think a really cool thing is, despite being a big name and famous enough that, like, this is the first SCP guest we've had on that, Ever. like, if I name. No, that if I name drop it to people that aren't, like, super SCP savvy, they recognize it. You know what I mean? Like, even Cactus. If I'm like, yo, I'm so excited we had this big guy named Cactus. They're like, who? But I say Dr. Gears. And I guess because he's also a character, people recognize that. And that was really cool getting to, like, tell people about that. And I got some people to check out our podcast as a result. And that was really fun. And he was also just a great guy to talk to. He was really funny and charming. And I would love to have him on. I feel as with every single guest we have, I have the worry that, like, we're going to offend them. And that's the end. (laughs) That, that is always my worry, too. It's like, we're going to say something, and it's going to be, like, related to some trauma we don't know about their lives, and they're going to leave mid-call, and then <laughs> Nameless has to edit like, that out. There's always people will be like, excuse me, are you joking about my article? I would so Yeah. That, that's, my, that's my biggest the fear. Because, like, the whole thing is I like to joke and make goofs and gaffs during most articles, so I'm always afraid I'm going to do that, and someone's going to, like take offense and i think that fear has been built by like seeing people constantly complain about downvotes or like comments on twitter but actually every guest we've had on has been so chill and like down to except for that one self-aware you know, remember yeah that one. what remember, except for that one you remember yeah except for when we had tan honey on as a guest and i okay. insulted him and he said he would destroy me <laughs> that's it stand still i'm, I'm telekinetically pummeling you <laughs> Actually, funny enough, even though you were obviously joking, when we had you, quote-unquote, on as a guest and we read your articles was the only time a guest got mad when I made fun of their article. So, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. That never happened. Uh, You're insane. Typo- t- 
Tipograph Tipographich says, Gears is person I'm less expecting to see here. Uh, yeah, we didn't expect to see him here either, but we're very glad he was on. Uh, Boris WW, who didn't comment on the Spike Brennan episode, by the way, that he waited two years for. Um, I'm still mad about that slightly. Said, to be honest, kind of fucked up how the walled city was described. It's just a place where norm- where people live. What's the walled city? I mean, it was in the, the Architect episode. It was the city where the Architect was like doing the stuff. But it's a real, it was a real historical uh, location. Oh, it was a real historical location? Yeah. Well, obviously there wasn't an uh, anomaly, like... <laughs> Oh, no, no, I know, but I see I see what he's saying. Is he saying yeah. that, like, the whole, like, people being all, like, hoo 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 and, like, Dark Souls NPC, like, was insulting or something. I, I don't think that was the intention. I can see where you're coming from. I'm not going to touch that with a 10-foot pole, but uh, I respect your opinion, Boris. Uh, I didn't even know that was a real place. <laughs> I just thought it was made to up. Be fair, to be fair, he didn't know the Gulf of California was a real place either. Yeah, so uh, Thought still, Experiments oh, yeah. and Other Stuff says... Insert Let's something unfunny here. Anomalous, don't edit it. Thought experiments and other stuff says insert something unfunny here. So anomalous, I want you to take your mic you and record. Insert uh, wrong. In- yeah. Seriously, thought experiments and other stuff. Really? Well, anomalous, what I want... Okay, this isn't going to work anymore. We've talked too much okay. after it. Never mind. Uh, uh, anomalous. Uh, I have an idea. Anomalous, you can insert something funny there. Okay, I'm so mad. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to cool myself down there. The Rage of a Thousand Suns came out. Green that was what I was trying to say, and you kept interrupting me. I hate, uh, yeah. you. I hate um, you. Maybe don't try and steal my ideas, okay? I mean, like, if you think it's a good idea, you can just say so. You don't need to, like, claim ownership of it. Kind of okay, weird. okay. I'm, I'm actually, I know you're teasing me, but I'm going to lose it. I'll almost <laughs> ed- edit my anger out. <laughs> edit out my oh, rage. Anomalous, you should, like, um, just so it is a little confrontation, you can edit some of this anger out from Donnell. Thanks. That's I, I, I actually can feel like my vein popping out of my forehead. Next I think comment. you're gonna have to read for a bit. <laughs> I, I need a second. It's Cal oh, Alexos says, "I can't hear Tatany clearly because darn hell is too loud in this episode. Even louder than all the previous ones that I just continued through." Donnell replies, "Scene. Gotta know. I think my mic was up a bit high, but also Taz is much quieter, so we were working to adjust that a bit. The yeah, your mic sounds way better now. I appreciate and encourage you to turn up to max volume. <laughs> yeah, it's way better now. Uh, King, King T Rex 101 says, So what is Clef going to be on? I love how we get one of the most like prominent it's and coolest people on the you, wiki. It? Yeah, it's T-Rex never fucking on. good enough for King T Rex. It's like, So what are you going to get Obama on? I'm just saying, I'm not really impressed. <laughs> I can tell you, as soon as we get Clef on, it's going to be Moto 42. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to be like. All right. Uh, Three Yellow Arrows, which is a very interesting name, says 440. SCP-028 is used in SCP-3942 and Incident 028-A. Good to know. Uh, I have no clue what they're talking about. Oh, you can <laughs> skip, skip this next one. Skip this next one. I hate this guy. Hamilton says, who's this Dr. Gears guy? Never heard of him. Yes, you have, um, Hamilton. Yes, you have. Because you made, the, you made he, the thumbnail, and you wrote featuring Dr. Gears in it. Yeah, so clearly... So you're you a liar, him. basically. And that's oh, where you're Hamilton. going to I die here. I haven't had, like, a conversation conversation with Hamilton in a while. It's just been, like, DMs related to the channel lately. Hamilton, we need to do a stream again. We need to talk about this behavior in the comments section. We need section. to talk. No, that's not what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> no, we need to hear out, my man. Listen, Hamilton, you, you've been acting out lately, and we, this is an official warning from the DSCP that we don't pay I've, you at all. I've got an idea. I've got an idea. Instead of password, for the comments, this is now Hamilton's intervention. Please post what you would say at Hamilton's intervention for being mean in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Be nice to him. He's our, he's our thumbnail guy, we, and he's, he's a very fragile. important part of our team. We love him. Uh, Andrean Renevo says, since when is there a transcript of the podcast? That's awesome. I have no clue what the hell they're... Oh, oh Guare! Uh, apparently YouTube adds them, so maybe we do have one yes. somewhere? We are, like, for, I haven't even done it, changed anything, but apparently I'm just writing transcripts now. I'm guessing uh, Andre means if you put CC on. Here, let me test it. I'm going to put CC on and see if, like, captions... Oh! <gasps> they do! What's we have say? captions on our video! Well, it's just what we're saying, <laughs> but there's probably some errors in there if I watch long enough. That's crazy! We're a big enough deal that YouTube auto captions are shit. That or they just Hell invented yes. a new algorithm. Uh, Sean Saxum says, I'm the biggest and best dweeb on this gosh darn wiki. Uh, Raul Alves. 
Yeah. I mean, he's definitely the Liar. best. Dweeb. I don't know if he's the biggest dweeb. I don't know if anyone's a bigger dweeb than me. I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of a huge yeah, fucking nerd. Like, I know you're, Dune has... Bozo. Dune has the whole Toho bit, but, like, he's well-beloved, and, you know, he's got lots of friends IRL and on the thing. I don't I know thought, if it counts oh, as a dweeb. Oh, is it the Toho bit now? I thought it was, like, the Asuka bit. No, no, no. He's on his Toho shit again, because um, Eddie Bird started I'm... doing Toho art. You have to keep up on the lore, Tan. I'm you need sorry, to be more dude. social media-pilled. Dune actually had a bit where he just kept meta making fun of the SCP wiki behavior, and then he was like, "Sorry guys, I really love you all." And then he did his uh, Toho bit. So that was the whole Dune arc from since Asuka, since you're not caught wow. up. Wow, I'm happy for uh, you. Route, we we all are on this. There's a lot of Toho day. games. There's a lot of material for you to enjoy. <laughs> Raul Alves said oh you know what I really want to get fuck I really want to I know we have like eight other guests lined up and they're going to hate us for me saying this but I really want to get Eddie Bird on like really bad I would love to get Eddie Bird on like <laughs> one of my favorite artists that would be amazing and we could read like their favorite articles and I would I would love to talk to him He has he's the, one of the funniest people on the Twitter uh, I'm going to well I'm actually too busy right now but do you mind reaching out to him um, I don't think I've ever spoken to Eddie Bird but <laughs> Sure. It's okay. You're Mr. 5000. You have the clout to carry you through your awkwardness. Uh, Raul Alves says, Oh shit, Gears. I respect this guy very much. What a nice episode. I hope his cancer treatment goes well. Also, here's a JoJo-related question. What do you guys like about all the JoJo villains from chapters 1 through 8? Are they good villains in a narrative sense? If you can give a quick spoiler-free thoughts on some of them in case you guys might be short on time, feel free to. <laughs> Savior. Savior man. Thanks for everything. This was a great episode. Thanks, guys. Raul, you are a beam of light in this dark, dark Let's skip this one. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Fuck off. Okay, let me get my thoughts. One through eight. I'm going to rapid Dio. fire and then take rapid I like rapid Dio because he's smoke. Cards. I like Dio as I like well. I think Dio's... he's a god. Okay, I guess Tan's going first. Dio. I like <laughs> Dio in part three because he's an asshole. And like a god as well. Four. I like Kira because he's just an ordinary guy. He's just playing her out. I would hardly right? call Kira Yoshikage ordinary. Part 5. I like Diavolo because he tried to kill his daughter. Part 6. I like Pucci because he's menacing and he's a priest. Part 7. I like Valentine because he's menacing and he's the president. Part 8. I like... Uh, what's his name? <laughs> no one knows who the villain of Part 8 is even though it's over. Uh, what's his name? Because he dances. What about that guy you like who like... What was that guy who, like, you couldn't approach that you really that's liked him, and he had that's that him. cool that's speech? The main villain. What's his name? Um, beautiful. That's the, the beautiful you, but that's his stand. Uh, Toru, his what's name is stand? Toru. I just what's his him, stand? I beautiful you? The beautiful you. Okay. Uh, for me, I really like all the JoJo villains. My absolute favorite is probably either Dio or Cars as well. We're talking I think Dio or uppercase Dio? <laughs> Uh, uppercase Dio. I think my fav- my least favorite's Diavolo. I still like him, I just think he's the weakest and least developed of the villains. Um, yeah. And Tan pretty much named all the good reasons, and I don't want to do another thing taking up a list. Uh, Shythalia says, I was honestly starting to get worried that this podcast has actually ended and was thinking about unsubscribing. Sorry about that. I'm relieved to see this. What? I, I realized that not every fan is on the Discord when I was like, hey, I know I joked about this being the last episode, but we just need a break this I week. I to know. I had no involvement in that joke. We that was me. That was me. I just thought it would be funny because it was episode 100. I'm sorry. What about now? Okay, I'm sorry. The wreckage of our channel. Is it funny What now? do you mean the wreckage? We didn't lose any subscriber. We almost lost Shythalia, but we didn't, which is based. Uh, Shaitheli says, but anyway, Dr. Gears, the man himself? Indeed, Dr. Gears, the man himself. This whole episode is just like us riding off the cloud of Dr. Gears. It's goodwill. That's what every guest episode is. <laughs> I don't know about that. I mean, I wouldn't really call the Hamilton episode riding on his cloud. Yeah, he's more of a, a leech. No, I'm sorry, Hamilton. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Take that the, back please, right please now. The I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm going hollow right now as we speak. <laughs> I just read the podcast. <laughs> I knew episode 100 was clickbait, but at the same time, first you tell everyone to make fun of him in the comments this week, and then you fucking... Uh, I don't even know. I knew episode 100 was clickbait, but at the same time, I was kind of worried that it might be true. It must be really obvious that I don't have a Discord. 
Edit 2. What if you destroy a building box whatever that was affected by 184 from the outside? What if you destroy it from the outside? What happens to its insides? I don't remember if this idea was ever touched upon, so I'm just wondering. I want to just, like, I remember what, what if you put in a sock? Can we, like, do it like a clown, like, pull infinite socks out of it? That would be freaking Wah-hoo. awesome. That'd, that'd be the counter to socks since they seem to always get lost, am I right? Hashtag relatable. <laughs> That's a little life hack. <laughs> stick the giant like eldritch anomaly inside of a sock would it even fit isn't it kind of big it's like a big ball yeah edit three I it's just like remember there was a t- you know what they say my guys with big feet they got a big <laughs> got him <laughs> Edit 3. I just remembered there was a tale or w- oh, a one proposal relating to 184. Maybe you guys could read it one day. I thought it was cool. And no. sorry I keep editing my comments, lol. I'll never read it. No problem. Yeah, this is like the Reddit of comments. Um, Thank you, kind stranger. Okay, I was about to read the reply, but they literally said a thing saying, please don't include this reply, so I will not. Really? What does it say? Um, <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> not doing that. Uh, insert clever name here. Returning from my common slumber to say, holy shit, it's Dr. Gears! Also, a uh, funny reference to the video. I'm funny, haha. I'm starting to get the impression that no one watches our videos anymore, and they just occasionally see a cool guest and decide to make a comment about Damn, it. we stagnated. We have to take the podcast yeah, to a new level. Maybe we need to, like, change what we do, because I feel like we, d- d- I'm we've worried just, now. We've discovered SCP. <laughs> Yeah, and maybe it's time to to move on to a new medium. Oh my god, destroy SCP where we roast popular articles that have no flaws, (gasps) just to be for no reason. Actually, destroy SCP is a very toxic thing, but I'm going to be honest, if if destroy SCP had existed in like the edgy era of comedy in like 2016, it would have fucking taken off on YouTube. You know it would have. The spinoff starring Anomalous and Hamilton. (laughs) (laughs) Destroying SCP. Uh, War Eagle 21 which is still a cool username, says, It's cool that you read through 184 The Architect. Will you go back later and read the data expunged link? Absolutely. Probably not, but Next maybe. Next episode. Oh. Uh, Dr. Kier sounds like James Spader Next is all strong. <laughs> it's like from Westworld. Next episode sounds a whole lot like never. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. Remember, remember when uh, fucking Spike Brennan was next episode? Am I right, fellas? Yeah. Oh, man. Uh... Oh my god. My my spouse, cute, sweet Corgo, who I love with all my heart and want to propose to one day, says, OMG, Darnell on podcast? A face I cannot... Dis- Do you know what face that is? Uh, have, what the fuck? <laughs> I cannot Corgo, decipher what, it. My, what, what, what expression is this? <laughs> it's a secret code of some sort. Free? Uh, they say, uh, okay. love these. Along with your, your hey. Hamilton RP intervention responses, please... Describe what this face might be to me in the next episode's comment. Yeah, go go back to the last episode. Give us a free view. Look at Corgo's comment and tell us what this face. Yeah, is. while you're trying to decipher, just leave the video running. That really helps. Make so. sure you watch. Yeah, make sure you watch, let the ads go all the way without skipping. Uh, Aetheral space references. Ao, see that's another thing. I, you you are always like, don't make Aetheral space references. No one gets that. Well, Corgo gets the bitch, and that's all that matters. Whoa! So I can. Why'd you call me a bitch? Many Aetheral space. I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. That was wrong. It's all right, you fucker. Um, I apologize. I'm putting out my twit longer right now. I'm sorry I called Tanhoni a B-word on the episode that is not coming I'm a, yet. Well, I'm at a two-count for the C-word uh, now, so I can't <laughs> fucking talk. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Did you edit that on our April space so we could have monetization on or not? I did not. <laughs> oh, my God. It doesn't get monetization so anyway. <laughs> it, you don't put monetization on AS? I mean, well, there's ten views down now. It's never going to make any money anyway. I might as well No, no, I, no, 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 no. It's not a... Like. You're, you're misunderstanding. It's not about monetization. If you don't put it honestly and YouTube catches you, you get well, yeah, like a strike I, I or something. I did put that on honestly. Oh, okay, okay, okay. No, I don't care then. Love this one so, no, so, just so funny. Again, just no, little guys. Because these actually do make us a little bit money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they do? I, hmm. Uh, well, not yet, but... Yeah, okay. I'm starting to feel like Tanhoney's embezzling. I, for <laughs> so long now, we've yet to make any money. I definitely think Tanhoney's embezzling from the DSCP. There funds. is not enough money to be worth embezzling. <laughs> How have you not gotten paid yet? You kept telling me like every month it was going to be next month, and now you're just saying we simply don't have enough. Well, let me, I'm not checked in a while. Let me check. Surely something's been deposited. You put your bank information, right? I did, yeah. Well, well we can't talk, so, we can't talk about this now. Okay, okay, okay. Prismatic says, holy, it's Dr. Gears, the famous Dr. Gears, known for being Dr. Gears. Hell yes. That was like a meta comment before all the comments. That was kind of based. 
Uh, an anomalous writer says, The Great Gears is here. Wowza. Warre Fernandez Emil says this I did not expect. Gears is awesome both as a writer and as a person, so it's great to have him here, and I hope to see him more in the future. Us too. P.S. Anomalous at an archipelago in the Gulf of California. Okay. Well, now you ruined it, Warre. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Warre, don't we plan to do something special with him soon, Tan, as well? Um, we sure do. Yes, we do. Yeah, we... Yeah, yeah, that's what I was saying. I wasn't making a meme. Oh. We have that thing planned that we're going to do. Is that next week or in the near future? Um, that's in the near future. So I don't know we haven't got a specific date nailed down yet, but... Okay. JTKC says, Holy shit, it's Mr. SCP himself. Great to visit back to the old series and see what's changed since then. It's also really cool to get one of those really classic doc- authors. Dr. Clef Wet... Oh my god. I'm not even reading the rest of this comment. I'm pissed. <laughs> I'm kidding. My discovering SCP withdrawal has been sated for now. Thanks, boys. P.S. Thank you, Tan, for keeping my brain alive and army Aetheral Space has been a great help. No problem at all. That's nice. Aetheral Space is honestly, like... I clown on it because I've read way too much of it and I read it way too frequently. I think most people either binge a web serial at once or they, like, come back to it every few weeks or months or something. But, like, so I notice the little patterns and I tease, like, every time Eyes Widened (laughs) is in there. But, like, it's a really good web serial. And I mean this, and I wish it had more, more people knew about it. I wish it had, like, more clout because I honestly think it's really good, and if Tan sets up a proper Patreon with rewards, I think he can make some money on it, which would be awesome, because that'd be one step towards not having to work at the call center anymore. Am I right, boy? Calls. I can't legally talk about the call center, because it's government. Can't, no, it's not government. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God! He's a, <laughs> Tan only works for the, MI6. What's the British version of CIA. Yeah, MI6. All right. Well, thank I you guys, as always. I'm boring my job is with, like, doing spy shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Taylor's like, oh, don't worry. I just, I just hate I just work. Have... And you're like, all right. Here's how you defuse the bomb. I'm like, yeah. I'm starting a, uh, a revolt in a peaceful country. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! Are you sure you don't work for America? Question mark. All countries are the same. Damn. You That's heard of the world of our nations. Oh my lord. All right. Well, I'm ending the thing here before we say anything too insane. Bye. Won't you join us? Bye.